Hello, I'm Rich Lund, and welcome to another edition of Indie Labs, where we put the science in your hands. You ever see any of the Alien movies? Look, I don't know how old you are, and I know those movies are pretty scary, but still, the biology of the xenomorphs has always just been so interesting to me. Even though it's a fictional alien animal, it's got some really cool things going on with it. Particularly, one of the cool yet dangerous things about it is that it's an acid-based life form. It's got acid for blood. The acidic level of its fluids are so strong that they can actually like melt through and dissolve steel on the ships. And even its breath can be corrosive. The creature's dangerous on so many levels, including a pH level. pH is a measured value in chemistry that can tell you how acidic or how basic a solution is. 7 on the pH scale is neutral. Something like pure water would have a neutral 7 for a pH. Anything above 7 is considered a basic or alkaline solution. And anything less than 7 is considered to be acidic. Also, the further that number is away from 7, the stronger the base or the acid is. Well, xenomorphs might not be as scary if you find out that you actually have something in common with them. You breathe out acid. Okay, let's be clear here though. You're not going to be breathing through and corroding down padlocks or busting through metal doors with your breath anytime soon. But you do exhale CO2, carbon dioxide. And that chemical is considered to be an anhydrous acid. Anhydrous is a word that means without water. And so a chemical like carbon dioxide that's an anhydrous acid, it means it's an acid if you add water to it. And that's what we're going to show you today. In Indie Labs number 20, we showed you how to make an indicator solution just using some red cabbage. Remember that one? It's a solution that can change color to indicate to you something about the pH of the solution. Well, if you missed that one, go back and watch it, because we're going to need some of that indicator solution for today's experiment. And then other than that, the only thing that you need is two glasses and a straw and the air from your lungs. Here we go. Let's show you how you are an acid breather. Start here by pouring just a little bit of your indicator solution, but enough to blow through. And you actually want two glasses of this. The reason why we want two of them is so that way after we experiment with one, we can compare it to see how it looked before the experiment. This one then is going to serve as our control. Get yourself a straw. Bendy ones are fun. And you're ready to do the experiment. Alright, so we've got our control, and now this is going to be our experimental solution. I'm going to blow bubbles through this. And it's going to take a while. That was just one breath. How's it looking? Let's do two more. look any different to you? Well, that's why we got the control. Let's compare them and see. Okay, so here's our original control, and here's our experimental. Experimental there on the left. It is a little bit pinker, isn't it? Just a little bit, but it's noticeable. All right, so what happened? What did we see here? Well, it's a slight difference, but our experimental solution that we blew bubbles into, it did turn a little bit of a pink color. And you might remember from Indie Labs number 20, a pink color indicates to us an acidic solution. So by blowing bubbles in through the solution, we lowered its pH, less than 7. What we're witnessing is that some of our carbon dioxide that we're blowing through the water is actually mixing with the water and reacting with it. When carbon dioxide and water get together, there can be a chemical reaction that combines the two into H2CO3, also known as carbonic acid. Some of that carbonic acid, then, is also reacting with the anthocyanin pigments that are inside of our indicator solution, causing them to be a different chemical that's pink in color. Now, most of what you breathe out is not carbon dioxide, only a small amount of it. And what you bubble through the water, then, of the carbon dioxide that's there, very little of it actually does end up mixing with the water. And of the carbon dioxide that does mix with the water, a very, very small fraction of that ends up reacting with the water to become carbonic acid. But see, that's just it. It doesn't take much acid or base at all to significantly change the pH of a solution. Small little changes like that can have large effects on the pH. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this Indie Labs, and if you learned something from it, that thumbs up like is always appreciated. And subscribe to the channel for some upcoming experiments that are going to be fun and effective. Thanks for watching, I'm Rich Lund, and I'll catch you acid-breathing organisms next time.
Hand me that mic back. I just can't leave it alone. I transmit to it more gamma than a massive star supernova. Like any creation disc. Round your favorite black hole, I'll be spinning and spinning and rotating. I'm taking thrones. Don't worry about it, pa. It was never yours. You can't be wearing a crown with a second you claim ain't your own. I learned that long time ago, back when I was screaming, dreaming, giving my super.